Good evening, and welcome to Mid Valley Bible Church's virtual prayer meeting for Wednesday evening, August 18th. My name is Doug Hornock, and I'm the pastor here at Mid Valley Bible Church. As I'm sure many of you are aware, last week my wife and I, Connie, were in South Carolina. We went there for the 95th birthday of Connie's mother, Pat Chambers. Two days later, she peacefully passed into the presence of the Lord. It was a wonderful experience for us to be there at her bedside, knowing that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. I had a wonderful mother-in-law, someone that I grew to love deeply, and I had a very profound respect for her because of all that she had gone through. She was a prolific writer, she wrote a number of articles that appeared in a publication that our Fellowship of Churches, the IFCA International, publishes and that Marsha Hornock was the editor of for many, many years. It's called simply Chera Fellowship. And it's a magazine that was written or published rather primarily for widows as a source of encouragement. And mom wrote a number of important and very meaningful articles for that publication. This past summer, her final article appeared in that publication, and it's entitled simply, God Has Taken Care of Me. And what I want to do for our devotional thought this evening is simply read that article in its entirety. As I said, it's entitled simply, God Has Taken Care of Me. Mom writes, Croft F. Pins wrote, it is better to forgive and forget than to resent and to remember. It has been hard for me to do that. Our marriage was a difficult one. My husband and I met when we both worked at the State Village for Epileptics in New Jersey. We started dating and on Sundays we went to church together. We were both raised in Christian homes. We married and took an apartment in town. The difficulty began when our first daughter was born. That would be Connie. Court and mom had three children, uh, all of them daughters. Again, reading, the difficulty began when our first daughter was born. He had expected and looked forward to having a son. He told me mother's baby, father's maybe, which he repeated when each of our three daughters was born. I was thankful that I didn't have a son who might have followed in his father's alcoholism. When DNA became possible, I asked him to have his done, and I would have the girls done also. Then he would know that they were indeed his offspring. He refused. I didn't drive then, and when he was unable to work because of a hangover, I had to call a friend to take my little one to the babysitter and then take me to work. The babysitter questioned me about having to work when I had a baby. She didn't think it right to do that. We had to eat and have a place to live, I told her. He couldn't hold a job and had frequent auto accidents. He lost his license. We moved in with his mother, a widow, who gladly took us in. She loved having her little grandchild with her. They attended the nearby school. Since I had two years of college, I was able to get a job teaching in grade school and rode the school bus to school. The principal told me I couldn't do that. I had to get a car. My brother-in-law helped me learn to drive, get a license, and buy a used car. To keep my job, I had to take college education courses, which I did. Eventually, over the years, I earned bachelor's and master's degree. One day, a teacher came to me and told me that she saw my car being towed out of the school parking lot. When I questioned the person responsible for towing the vehicle, he told me that it was because I hadn't paid my gas bill. I had given my husband a check to cover the bill. He was supposed to give it to the station owner while on his way to work. That didn't happen. I paid the bill and retrieved my car. When he became blind, macular degeneration, and sick, COPD, he was afraid I would put him in a nursing home. I wouldn't do that, but hired home care instead. He was resentful that I didn't take care of him, his nursing care, but I had to work to support our family. He died several years later. 
And here's the paragraph that I think is the most telling about my mother-in-law. Our Lord took care of us, and we were able to keep our family together. I learned to depend on him. I have to remind myself not to grieve over my marriage, but to rejoice in the daughters I have. I try not to remember the past, but know that God has taken care of me and mine. Forgive and forget. As I said, I had a wonderful, wonderful mother-in-law. The grace and the beauty that is Connie's comes in part from her mother. And I am very grateful tonight that God has blessed me with that wonderful, wonderful mother-in-law that I had for 48 long years. And tonight, I want us to just pray that God would bless me as next Tuesday, we'll be going to the funeral there in New Jersey. Uh, next Wednesday's devotional is going to be related a little bit to the issue of death, but we'll save our thoughts for that devotional. But I want us to go to prayer now, and I want us to just bring before the throne of grace some of the prayer requests that God has uh, laid on the hearts of our church family. So with that before us, let's now go to prayer.